The weight of a mass, a tale of faith by Josephine Noviso. Once upon a time, a king betrothed to a queen from a faraway land consented to be married in the cathedral, even though he knew that only a handful of old women would attend the holy mass. It was not that his subjects wished the royal couple ill, or that they would not find their own ways of celebrating the union, but the king's people had grown cold and careless in the practice of their faith. A while before the ceremony, a ragged old widow shuffled into the kingdom's most prosperous bake shop. Subjects soaring in high spirits and decked in finery whisked past her, carrying away the finest confections and loaves of bread. The baker lifted elegant pastries and arranged them in lacy boxes, upon which he tied jaunty bows. His son, a kindly boy, guarded the royal wedding cake from children's probing fingers, all the while describing how he and his father had erected it. Finally, it was the widow's turn in the crowded shop. For the love of God, she begged the baker, if you will give me a crust of stale bread, I will offer my mass tonight for you. The baker's son spun on his heels to fetch the bread reserved for children who fed the royal swans. But his father growled, this woman shares the disease from which you suffer and your mother before you. If I didn't keep you busy here, I'd find you on your knees in church with the likes of her. A hush fell over the crowd. The baker peered over the counter. You propose to hear a mass for me? He challenged the old woman. I'd rather hear the jingle of your coins. But I haven't a shilling, the widow whispered. Then I haven't the bread, the baker shot back. Father, the son protested. She asked in the name of God. Then let God provide her bread, the baker exclaimed. The widow turned to leave, but the baker had not finished taunting her. Let us see how much bread I would owe you, he said. He tore a tiny corner off his finest tissue paper and read aloud as he formed two minuscule words. One mass. The baker held up the tiny piece of paper and with a ceremonious flare, he laid the wispy scrap onto the resting tray of his brass scale. He then flicked a slice of old bread onto the other tray. He blinked, confused. The bread side had not dropped to lift the lighter paper. Impossible, the baker exclaimed, placing a marzipan apple onto the bread side. Still, the tray holding the paper stayed down. The baker piled layered cake onto the tray but this did not tip the scale. He stacked his best cherry-topped cupcakes onto the balance, but they did not make the difference. Brushing past his son, he swept heavy-filled chocolates into a box. Still, the scale did not budge when he placed those on it, too. He arranged a dozen poppy seed cakes and two dozen rolls, rolls onto the pile. The paper outweighs his goods, a man exclaimed. The Royal Council of Weights and Measures tested the scale just last week, the baker protested. Something's gone wrong with it. The baker's son lifted the tiny scrap of paper off the scale, and a gasp went up as the baked goods crashed down with a jangle. Everyone began speaking at once. What can this mean? They asked each other. The crowd quieted to watch as the baker emptied the heavy tray and tested the scale with all his weights. Even though smaller than game pieces, the scale responded to every change floating up and down. The scale is correct, a woman exclaimed. Of course it is correct. The baker bellowed, I'm an honest man. 
Compelled by the event, clients rushed to the doors, calling in more witnesses from the streets. The baker addressed his son. Pilot High, this time, turned the scale around so that the trays are switched. The breads and buns, candies and cakes brought their side down with a satisfying thud. Now, the baker said as he let the snippet of paper float down toward the new tray. We'll see the truth. No sooner did the tissue touch the shiny brass tray than it lifted the opposite one. But I don't understand, the baker muttered as he ra ran to fetch his freshest donuts. He piled on fruit cakes and cream cakes, berry tarts and poached pears. This can't be, he cried as he plastered on plum pudding and candied fruits, almond confetti and crushed walnuts. The mass intention weighs more than these, the baker's son marveled. The baker was beside himself with bewilderment. He turned to his son. Don't think I know that you would abandon the baking trade to become a priest, he warned. And don't think any of this will influence me. He took a deep breath. Bring me the royal wedding cake. As the baker's son rolled the cake's cart through the crowd, it parted, respectful lest the prize confection get damaged. On a count of three, the baker's ordered his son, help me get it onto the scale. This will put an end to the nonsense. One, two, three. The wedding cake teetered on top of the pile. The paper on which the baker had written the words, one mass, hadn't even fluttered. The baker and his client stood dumbfounded. Just then, the cathedral bell began tolling the call to the royal wedding mass. The baker's son stood over the piece of paper staring at it. Then he lifted it from the scale. Hands surged forward to rescue the wedding cake as the things beneath it crashed down with a weighty clang. A man went out into the street and took up the Ave Maria. The bells were tolling. Other clients who had intended to celebrate the royal wedding in diverse ways now filed out and processed toward the kingdom's great cathedral. One by one, they joined the masculine voice in raising the lofty hymn. The stunned baker saw that only cus the only customer left in his shop was the old widow. He made a gesture of putting everything at her disposal. Come every day, he told her. You will never go hungry again. The widow smiled and tucked only a thin slice of bread into her pocket. As the baker watched his son unbutton his white apron, the father sensed that one day, the boy would be exchanging it for a white collar. The baker, his son, and the widow trailed the procession to the cathedral to offer mass with their monarchs. Amidst singing and the exclamations of wonder and joy, the baker asked the old lady, why did you take only a slice when you could have anything and everything in my shop? I was ashamed to take more, the widow told him. Ashamed, the baker asked, but it was you who believed in God's power while the rest of us had grown cold. I was ashamed, the widow explained, because even though I had never given up going to mass, I asked you only for a crust of stale bread in exchange for it. You see, my friend, like you, I too do not know the weight of a mass.